So, yes. Nakane. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe I'll start with the first time I came across your work, and it was it was kind of um, it was music, um, as it is, and it was quite strange for me because I almost felt like I was hearing a like a creative sibling or something like that. There were so many things and ways in which you were approaching music and breaking down, um, using different genres with with different subject matters and they were kind of undermining each other quite a lot. And then there were these different histories that you were also pulling from, um, musical histories. And I was... I was kind of I was blown away because I I hadn't heard anything like it, you know. And there were so many there were so many things happening in there that were just seamlessly brought together. And it wasn't and it isn't that it was it felt like the music was kind of um, contrite or contrived in any way. It was just digested in you and as I said before, a gift to the world. Like totally, you know stayed with me and I listened to it and still do on an almost daily basis. <laughs> um, and I, I really was interested in, in asking you like how you got to that. And because I, again, there was this side of religion, which was familiar to me, familiar to how I grew up at home and then what you were choosing to undermine in that, what you were choosing to use, the musical language. And I was interested to know how you kind of found yourself moving towards that. It's a long question. It's a long question. It's more of a monologue. Yeah, than, no, no. yeah. Greed. Greed. That's what, truly. It's because I just wanted to do everything. Mm. And it's, only, it's the only reason why I do the things I do is because... I see no reason why I shouldn't. Um, I'm Kosa, I'm from South Africa. And I, a few years ago, a friend of mine asked me, what is your, what do you think when you're thinking about being an artist? Pre-colonially. And I said, oh God, that's quite, a, that's a big question. Pre-colonial? Yeah, like, what, being an artist, if you were an artist, before yeah. we had our understanding yeah, yeah. of what yeah. artist means. Yeah, for sure. You know. Yeah. You guys got to go a bit further back than I do with this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I remember, I mean, I didn't, have a, yeah. I didn't have a clever answer, but I said, I mean, because I come from a family of Sangomas, you know, spiritual, spiritual mm. healers. And I said, that's, the only, that's, that's how I understand art, is that it was serving people and that it was as Absolutely. a conduit, right? The ancestors were speaking through you. And so you, da you danced, you sang, you created poetry, you acted, you performed, all of those things. Mm. And so I've always thought that the idea of doing one thing was enforced onto us. Mm. You know, like mm. the whole idea of jack of all trades, master of none, was I actually thought was kind of limiting. Mm. I think that a lot of people can do many things mm. and can do many things very well, but they're told not to because they feel like maybe doing that other thing will be diminishing. Yeah, yeah. And, I've, and that's the same way with music. Because I, w I was raised by classical, classically trained singers. Yeah. Who sang like Handel and Haydn and then also sang South African choral music. Mm. And who, my mom was obsessed with Marvin Gaye and a lot of Motown stuff. And I was doing musical theatre at school. Mm. And, and so I was just availability. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. I like that. So why wouldn't it come through when I'm making my own music? Really? Yeah. I feel like that's yeah, true yeah. about you as well. Yeah, yeah. In a, in a, especially thinking about the breadth of your your stealing <laughs> in a slightly in a slightly smaller pocket. Smaller. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know. Um, but but also, um, it's. It, it almost feels like, like with that, um, that there's a there's an attitude to culture which, to my mind, feels feels much more true. Where it's not about ownership, but it's about a type of expression um, that 
whatever means necessary, you're going to express something. And whatever it takes to tell the story, to find that mode of expression, you can take from it. Um, and again, that, that, that for me was something I was just like, Yes, that's, you know, that's... <laughs> that's me. Yeah, yeah, that's, I feel you, I feel you. Um, and, and, it isn't, um, and it isn't borrowing, because it's part of you. Um, it's, and that's where I think the stealing analogy is probably a lot more true to form. But it's just that, that ability to absorb all these different ideas and have the presence of irony, but it not mean that there isn't something sincere happening. It's so strange to say that, because I've always felt like I'm not, I don't have any sense of irony. <laughs> like I'm too earnest. Most of the time people are like, oh, this, you said that ironically. I'm like, no, 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 I meant it. <laughs> All the time. I mean, okay, sometimes I don't mean it. Hey, but, Matt, look, but, you, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. You, you wrote a hymn to anal sex. If there isn't any irony in there... You that was I mean? earnest! I, I know it's earnest. I couldn't be more you know, earnest because like, I feel like <laughs> anal sex deserves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 hey, I'm, and it's not there in the canon, so yeah, exactly. if, not, if not me, who? <laughs> and there wasn't a single smile that crossed across your face while, <laughs> while thinking that. You know what I mean? Like... I still, I remember I was on, when I was touring that album and I used to play the song and I used to, it used to segue from a song about my grandmother and then I used to sing that song and I said, my grandmother were really proud of me yeah. about writing a, a, song, a hymn to anal sex. <laughs> and I used to say, because she was a bad bitch. Yeah. She was. Bring she may not have on. approved of the Amazing. practice, but she would have approved of sort of endeavor or... Yeah, and I guess I, I, I almost said authenticity because of, but yeah. I, find, I find that word really dangerous. Sure. Because it, it gives me spiritual connotations and it gives me religious connotations. Yeah. And what does it mean? When I'm, someone's like, oh, it's so authentic. I'm like, but based on what? Like, how do you... It's like true, authentic. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. on, honest. Yeah. Honest. I think honest is maybe... Because it's broader, right? For sure. And it's so... And it's, 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 it's attached to the moment. And it's attached to intention. Absolutely. Whereas truth is too simple, too binary. Yeah. And too religious. And can, can be <laughs> political as well, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, um, exactly. And I, I think actually honesty is, is something that, that I think that is that is actually quite a good a good because you can you can produce something honestly that's contradictory within itself because of it. It isn't trying to say, as you said, this binary idea that yeah. this is correct, this yeah. is the way to do things. It's, a, um, it's, it's something about feeling. Yeah, for sure. And whether that feeling, if, whether you, as my therapist says, you know, that you know that feeling that like that thing that you don't like and you go, oh, I don't want it. He says, no, 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 lean into it for a little bit. <laughs> you, can, you can do that, but just lean into it. It's like when you take a cold shower. Yeah. Your first instinct is to run away. Yeah. But if you just stay there for a little bit. You get hypothermia. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a little bit, Michael. Still, yeah, I know. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but stay there for a little bit and you'll get used to it. Yeah, for sure. Know? Yeah. Um, and I've lost my train of thought. Sorry, sorry. That's... No, no, I've got what I was saying. Sorry. Leaning into it, yeah. Before that, but anyway. Yeah. Let's not make this about me. <laughs> how I, I don't know if, how many of you were here a few weeks ago when I was telling the story, but how I came across your work. Mm. You know, when I started making art or whatever you would call it, I always had these dreams of like being in a scene. You know, because you watch all these films, you know, and... People, there's a scene and these, all these cool, amazing artists are together, and I never ever thought. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether this says something about me, right? <laughs> Probably, because I just want to be at home. Sleeping. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to sleep. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but well, I'm building to something, I promise. But I was, I want to repeat the story. But I was coming out of a train. I was living in Brixton at the time, and I saw this beautiful painting. I thought, well, what is this? And I went to see this painting, and it was a group exhibition. And to cut a long story short, I mean, your works were the only works that really spoke to me. You know, there was a lot of good work there, but I remember thinking, huh, what is this now? Mm -hmm. Because 
for the same reasons that you've said. Um, because it, what it did is that it planted itself so quietly in a very noisy space. But it took up space, right? Without going, you know when someone's like, I'm confident, I'm confident. It's like, are you? You keep telling us. <laughs> but your work didn't do that. It did all the work for, for itself. Like it just, it just sat back there. Like a jazz player. Like Charles, M no, not Charles Mingus. <laughs> Farrah Sanders. <laughs> just did his thing. And I was really drawn to its breath but, and time. Like I could see so many, I could see so many movements and then it brought me, it made, it brought me right back to now. Hmm. And I forgot all about that. The things maybe you've stolen from. Yeah. The things that you've imbibed. For sure. The things that you love, that will come through you. And I don't know about how you feel about this, but a lot of artists always feel, uh, when someone speaks about influences, they go, oh, no, you know, it just came. But I love glorifying the people who've influenced me. God damn, like, you should know who I love. Because Absolutely. I wouldn't be able to make what I'm making if those people didn't exist, right? I mean, you even changed your name. I did. For, yeah. That's a little creepy. I know. <laughs> and I used to lie. It's kind of creepy, but it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I, used to, I used to lie, actually. I used to say, people go, oh, my God, so are you from Mali? Yeah. And I, my name used to be Nakane Ture. And I named myself after Alifa Katore. Mm. And I said, no, I'm Alifa Katore's illegitimate child. Yeah. <laughs> and people said, really? And then there would you be a split move. more second where I said, I, 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 I want to be Bob Dylan about it and go, yes. But then I thought, that wouldn't work in the 21st century. <laughs> I'd just be called a liar. <laughs> you know, whereas in the 20th century, Bob Dylan would be called, I know, he's creating his story. Yeah. No, you're a fucking liar. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure Alifa Kadora's children would come. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But yes, I wanted, I wanted to, uh, you know, I, yeah. again, I, again, it's the sense of wanting to belong to something. Um, I feel like... You feel miserably alone. I feel... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I don't feel like I... I wouldn't say it was a belonging in a sense of, like, a sort of identity or something like that but certainly there's you know there's there's a certain amount of of pilfering that without one's done where you end up belonging because you've taken so much yeah. you know what i mean so you're oh, part yeah. you're part of they're part of you yeah. um and and like that i feel like all these various influences are part of me i feel, I feel that when i you know like I know, looking at some some artists that have been dead for 300 years, um, but you can still trace their marks. You know, you can still feel like you're thinking together when you're looking at what they're making. Um, and like that, I do feel like I'm part of something uh, that's longer and bigger than myself, for sure. Um, and, and and I think I think that point of <laughs> Just acknowledging, which again is down to your point of honesty, like just acknowledging what it is that um, that makes you who you are, makes your work what it is. I think feel is. I still don't understand why one wouldn't do that. I don't. I don't feel like I don't. I don't really understand what this idea of uh, sort of authentic expression is that that someone holds on to, mm -hmm. in order to deny that. Actually, I just took that from this because <laughs> they did it so well. And that was and really I wanted it, you know. By. So yeah. it, it makes me wonder then, do you think about legacy? Um, because three, 300 years, someone has died 300 years ago and their legacy has moved around to you and you're in this room, as Ian Foster talks about, Ian Foster talks about this whole thing of like, when you're judging art, mm. which at this point in my life, because I don't want anyone saying what you said, <laughs> at this point <laughs> today, I could change my mind. I really agree <laughs> with this. It's the whole idea of like artists, like art should be, it's all in one room and should be judged equally. Right there, right then. Sure. Right. Um, you're talking about novels. 
Like we don't say, oh, well, you know, but it was, it was made in 17, whatever. And so it's not as good. If it's shit, as shit. Exactly. Do you know what That's I mean? Like, the truth. It's shit, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it was shit in 17, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's shit in 20, <laughs> Like, come on. Let's not make excuses for it. <laughs> you know? And so that makes me wonder then, like, do you care about how, how people would think, see you and think of you when you're dead and not? Um, I think what, well, like, maybe, um, well, I don't think I've got any control over that, yeah. you know, so that, that's that, um, that's you know, <laughs> yeah. um, so whether you get or not, it doesn't matter, right? But I do, I do Dead. think, I, do, I would say like what I feel is that maybe a, a kind of, particularly when trying to make something out of someone else's story, I feel that there's a responsibility in the telling of that story. Um, and I feel like, like that, that... Um, responsibility to what? To take it seriously and to... Um, yeah, this is going to sound so... <laughs> so, so what? Whatever, but um, to, to, to kind of do... Put everything that I can into it. Yeah. Um, to, because to do it's not justice. just about you at this point. No, exactly, exactly. And you can take a piss out of yourself. Yeah, but yeah. The moment yeah. That you take a piss out of someone else. Yeah. Then we're in dangerous territory, right? For sure. Yeah. For sure. But, but then that also comes into um, the creative process in that there's a certain you have to follow. You have to follow the creative process, and I find that kind of interesting because there's often times that a painting will ask something that maybe negates the narrative, you know, that isn't what I set out to make, um, and it changes, and then suddenly this idea of of trying to do justice to a narrative goes out the window because yeah. all you care about is this thing, you know, maintaining attention or whatever it is that the painting needs to... And following. Yeah, yeah, completely. Because at the end of the day, if the painting doesn't have something... Check it. It's fucking irrelevant. Like, yeah. it's, you know, it's like anything else. Well, you know. Um, but, yeah. Well, that's interesting because then I think about spirituality and, and it can be a taboo thing in these, in, in, in these days to talk about spirituality but I it's quite highfalutin maybe but my friend and I always, always talk about how we really take on board being pretentious artists mm. like people are like oh for fuck's sake it's just a song yeah. relax <laughs> you know what I mean it's, and it is it's just it a is. song it's just a painting it's just a yeah painting. yeah relax yourself 100% but I also do feel that if I didn't If I didn't commit to the spiritual side of it, I don't know, I think, I think maybe that's, that's also based on where I come from and the family I come from and when I was born and who birthed, like all of, this, like all of those very specific things, right? And someone else might look, might look at this theory that I have and go, doesn't mean anything. And it might not mean anything, but to me it does, right? The whole idea of spirituality and art. Yeah. And whether, my question is then, do you is, you, is your work, do you feel your work is spiritually charged? And, and or, 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 maybe that's not a good question. No, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult one. Like, like <laughs> do you open yourself up? Are you, do you avail yourself to be used by the spirits? I find <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so American horror story, isn't it? The cover. <laughs> Which is the best American horror story? <laughs> I, I think, that, you know, I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm going to do a, a, a politician. round the corner, round the corner answer where I would say more that um, I know how I am when I don't have painting in my life, and that is not a pleasant human being. I'm a dick, um, I'm a, I'm a dick. and um, yeah. Um, and I think I can see my wife in the back smiling at Going, that because mm, she knows exactly know what it. I'm talking about. Um, Holiday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, but it is like the the process, the life, the ma making the work is something which I haven't found any words that associate with what I feel that it is. Um, but I find it extremely 
for me on a personal level it's it's a sort of um it's one of the cornerstones of my life and and i can't really and wouldn't want to live life without it you know and and you like maybe. yeah yeah i, I would yeah maybe you couldn't. yeah maybe not have in a happy tried? way uh, i know <laughs> <laughs> you know I tried. um yeah did you yeah. in what sense well i went to idols when i was 17 and i got rejected in the first round and i was like i'm shit Huh. And my mum said, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a mother's honesty. Man. <laughs> you know, that's I think it was like my second audition. And I didn't go through the first round again. And I said, maybe I just don't have it. My mum's like, and uh, that's why I always trust my mother. She's like, maybe you don't. Mm-hmm. Maybe we all are hearing something that is not there. And I took some time off. And I was just so sad. Because mm. I loved it. But thankfully, my... The voice was breaking at the time. So I couldn't sing anyway. So maybe that's why I didn't make it. Whatever, fuck those guys. But whenever I've, um, I've, the music industry is, you know, and there have been times I thought, you know what, fuck music. And that doesn't last very long. Because I always go back to it. Like, with, against my will. I can't. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm just, like, I'm, dr- I'm drawn to the thing. For sure. You know? Without, without me even trying sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I'm trying not to do it. I'm like, I'm yeah, on yeah. a holiday. Yeah. Can I just like <laughs> drink and, yeah. I don't know, do holiday things? Sleep. Yeah. All I think about is sleep. Really. Yeah. Just love sleep. It's, it's, <laughs> so, something, speaking of sleeping, <laughs> something that I was interested in, again, which to my mind is a totally different world, is, is that of a performer. Mm. And, and talking to you, especially in the context of the last three years. Um, I'm I, outside, man. Honestly, man, like, I've, I, I just... Um, uh, but what it, what, what it also takes to do something that's as physical and, and giving as getting up on stage and, and performing that, let alone the expression, yeah. let alone, you know, and I, I was... I just loved hearing hearing you talk about how monastic your life becomes, mm. um, which no, is that's like nonsense. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only this. Yeah, completely. And yeah. yoga. And yeah. I don't know. Lots of annoying stuff. I'm very annoying in tour. In what I, sense? I eat spinach out of the bag. <laughs> I eat garlic sandwiches. Like you do not want to live with me. I smell like shit. <laughs> I just because I have to be healthy and I have to sing. If I wasn't a singer, I think I'd be less monastic. Mm. But I think it's because I really respect performance. Mm. And since I was a child, I've been performing since I was a child. And my music teacher, she really drilled it into me, the service, the performance. You, we used, she used to make sure that we, take, we took naps at 2 p.m. if we were gonna do a play in the, in the, in the evening or in the late afternoon because we had to preserve our voices. Hmm. And I remember I was the, the captain of our team at the, that year. Because our school was one of those really strange schools where if you were an artist, like, an artist, but if you were like a singer or played the trombone like I did, a really geeky thing, you were popular. <laughs> like, and I tell, my, I tell my partner this, and he's like, what? Sport was... If you were, if you were good at sports, you're like, yeah, whatever. You can do, you can throw a ball, give the fuck. Can you play the trombone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can you act in a play? And so she was really, like, we took it seriously, you know? We would choose what play we were doing in January, and then we would rehearse it up until maybe October, and then we would put it on. And so I knew that it took lots of work mm. and it took an incredible amount of um, diligence and sacrifice. And she always has to remind us, you know those soapies that you watch on TV that you love? They never go home until they're finished. They got, the act, like, they got it right. Looking back, she was abusing us a little bit. <laughs> because, I mean, mm. you have to go home. You have, <laughs> you have to go home. You have to go That's home. what the contract yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. Um, or else we're calling the unions. <laughs> Um, but we were 12 years old. So, and I think I, I carry that over into the performance space hmm. because there's nothing holier hmm. and profane at the same time as being on stage and performing to people. Hmm. 
does something that happens in a good show, like, like you, before the show, you, you're there, you go, oh God, please, don't, don't be shit, don't be shit, don't be shit, oh, mm. did, I, did I chew my guitar? Um, do I remember the words? And then you walk on stage and you're still having the conversation with yourself. And then something comes and it sweeps you away. And for that 45 minutes, an hour, you're operating on something beyond rationality. Mm. I guess because you've been, you've been prepping, right? So you know everything. You can play everything with your eyes closed. But something else takes over. And you are, all the preparation is just for that for five minutes. Mm. And then afterwards, you're so sad. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sad because, you know, because it's over. Yeah. You know, and you have to go you have to go to the hotel and you can't sleep because you're buzzing. Buzzing either because the show is shit or the show is amazing. Mm. Because the show is amazing, you 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 can't stop talking about it. The show is shit, you can't stop talking about it. <laughs> 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 Who's getting fired? <laughs> you know. But it's an amazing thing and it's Every time I sit down to write a song, the first thing I think about is I just imagine being on stage performing it for people. Hmm. And it's a double-edged sword, you know, because mm -hmm. as a child, I mean, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm almost American at this point when it comes to therapy because I've all to talk about, really. <laughs> you know, um, as a child, I got a validation from performing, hmm. you know, because, oh, if I do this, they'll love me. You know, and so I go to my therapist and I go, oh, this, this has happened, but, I'm, but my work is still performance. So where do I draw the line, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's funny because it's, it's almost the exact same. And when I think about being a child and making work, it was the only thing I would, I would say that, you know, when put in front of adults, whatever, they, there was a sort of recognition. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you value, but you're worthy. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Oh, you're so good. Yeah. Go make another one. And suddenly you're on the same level in a, in a, in a way because there's an appreciation of something that That's a, yeah. you know, someone else can't do, which almost never happens when you're a kid. How are Kenyans to children? To because South Africans are very <laughs> intense. In what sense? It's like the children are barely people. Yeah. You know, and children have to fight for the attention of adults to be taken seriously. Mm. It's like, you know, in, I don't know, like in Great Gatsby, those children who come, they're like, they show them, and then they put away again. <laughs> you know? Um, and so in order to prove that I was worthy of being part of, oh, I don't know, their attention or whatever, because I was also very nosy. Mm. And I had to show, like, oh, I'm cleverer than the other kids. Mm. And I can do this, I can do this. Mm. Is it the same... I think, I mean, beyond the... Or children, or, or children not called dogs. Then, well... Because to us it's called boys dogs. Which, Seriously? Yeah, not, like, until the circumcision thing. Okay. No way. And then you become a human being. Huh. I mean, it's another conversation. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. In, in a sense, well, you know, like, for, for us, the most offensive thing you can... Call a, a man is an uncircumcised man, okay? Oh, it's the same. It's like, that's like, you don't go there, you know? Yeah, you it's are the same. Finished. Yeah. Run yeah. away. Yeah. Like, move, con move, con move continents. Yeah, yeah, literally. It can, you cannot be lower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly the same, like that. I remember you said to me that the Kokoyo are, are kind of connected. Yeah, yeah. Like a, I searched for it, I didn't find it. Apparently, hey, oh, okay. you know, I, I maintain my artistic license for anything that remotely resembles. Don't take fact. anything we say here seriously. Yeah, <laughs> it's all vibes and feelings. Yeah, but but apparently, you know, the part of that migration around South the continent and, up, and then yeah. back up. Yeah, yeah. So it makes me feel good. I like that. There are a lot of similarities when it comes to like rituals, spirituality, but also just the clothing. Oh, it's uncanny. Like the patterns. Uncanny. There's so many things that are that are similar. Even to just how people look. Like there's a, you know, there's a real similarity like They've, that. Yeah. Because I mean, I used to look at a lot of Kenyan clothing, and I just think before when someone told me, I was like, oh, no, that's obviously Kosa. And you're like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Everything's about you, Kosa people. Kosa people really hold themselves in high esteem. Yeah. Because they're like, well, we have Mandela. We have. Tabombeki, we have. <laughs> and then the Mira Makeba, we have, we have. 
And we believe also because it's also a weird colonial thing where we were the first ones who were like West educated by West. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, it's a weird thing. It's like completely. We, we like we have we we're so in touch with our um, traditional thing, but we were also like super proud of the fact that we were the first ones who were colonized. <laughs> Which makes no fucking sense. <laughs> we just have to be the best. Yeah, That's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, yeah, winning. You know, we- winning. Yeah. <laughs> we had like this phone call yesterday where we said we're not gonna plan this today. It's just gonna be. I don't want to use natural because it's a funny word. It's just gonna. Be impromptu, but then we talked about how routine is so important to us. Mm, absolutely, talking about consistency. Tell me, give, talk me through a day when you are painting. Okay, wait, 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 wait. It won't take keep very that, long. Keep that. Keep yeah, that. Yeah. Keep that. Another part. Another question is like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> you told me to keep it, man. You've got to hold on to the damn thing yourself as well. Oh, fuck. It was a good one, I think. Because it, it was like, it was coming. Wait. Oh, yeah. This show, wow, right? And it took you almost three years. All three years to make. Less, less. Less. Yeah. It took you 30 years. Yeah, it's a good sales pitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, were you, when these paintings are put up, did you go back to your studio and start painting again? Or were you like, oh, fuck, I have to wait another year because I'm depleted? No, there were, like, it was so slow. I mean, you know, like if, yeah. if you take the hours in, in two and a half to three years, you can do, you could do more than this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think you could, it was a, it was a, a healthy pace. Um, there's a, great, a, there's, there's pace. a great quote by Hanif Qureshi. who says, his son once came into his room and says, do you just sit there and stare out your window? Is that, your, is that your job? And he said, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And then I'll write for 20 minutes. Yeah. But the, uh, the other hours, I'm just sitting there looking at the window, masturbating. A hundred percent. And I, like, that, that was always the um, understandable frustration when, <laughs> when, you know, things were not working, that, working out that well. And I'd be at home and, you know, my very concerned parents would come up to me and go, what the fuck? You what doing? are you doing? I'm, like, I'm thinking. Can't you I'm see? Just... You know, <laughs> it's been five Chris, years. Chris, are you listening? Thinking. Chris, yeah. are you listening? Thinking is very important. Just sitting there thinking. Yeah, exactly. My boyfriend is a very a, type A kind of person. Is like, come on, you're gonna do something. Yeah. I'm like it'll come. I promise. Yeah. It's, uh... And when it comes, it comes so quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to last very, very long either. It can no. just be. A... Are you talking about sex? Hey, but <laughs> look, man. As long as it's know. good. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Outcomes. <laughs> Outcomes. <laughs>